Utah wife arrested after telling informant she shot her estranged husband in his sleep. Well, hey, we're at the police station now. Earlier we were in that neighborhood where the family lived and neighbors understandably emotional. Now I've been going through the documents today. This is the affidavit a probable cause and it says that Jennifer Gledhill told a person who has been unidentified in this case that she shot and killed her husband and buried him in a shallow grave. Real quick, what the hell is happening with Kristen, the news lady? Is she okay out there? Is she dehydrated? Is she nursing some sort of hangover? Could you have just this once put her on a different story instead of having her cover the national news tragedy on camera facing the sun, looking like she's going through the DTs? A Utah woman has been arrested for investigation of murder after she told a confidential informant that she shot her estranged husband in his sleep and buried him in a shallow grave but did not disclose the location. Police said she knows who the confidential informant is because how many people did she really tell? Jennifer Gledhill, 41, of Cottonwood Heights, was arrested Wednesday and is jailed in Salt Lake County without bond. According to court records, the body of Matthew Johnson, 51, had not been found as of Thursday. Police said the Utah National Guard member was reportedly shot late September 20th or early September September 21st, the informant told police September 28th, six days after Gledhill openly admitted to killing Johnson, police records said Gledhill said she shot Johnson on the bed, buried his body and removed items from the house and destroyed them to cover up the crime, the informant said. Well, one neighbor that I spoke to told me that Matthew Johnson was a stand-up guy and a really good father. Even though the couple had been going through a divorce, Matt apparently told this neighbor, quote, I don't wish any ill will on her. Still, police Police say it was the couple's differences that led to Matt's disappearance. It's just one man's opinion because we really don't know what was going on behind closed doors. But if she shot that man in the bed, then that means he at least trusted that there was a line that she wouldn't cross. Even though the marriage was on the rocks and a divorce was underway, there was a clear, uneven level of animosity between the two of them in that household because this is just cold-blooded. Other court records indicate the couple was going through a contentious divorce and a custody dispute involving their three children. Gledhill, did she kill him while the kids were in the house? That's messed up if she did. Gledhill had obtained a temporary protective order against Johnson in late August, but a permanent order was denied September 16th, just days before the shooting after the court commissioner watched videos that Gledhill had taken of arguments and reviewed text message exchanges between the two. Commissioner Russell Minas determined that no abuse had occurred. Gledhill was equally confrontational, Minas said, and seeking a restraining order appeared to be a litigation tactic. I knew it. She couldn't prove that he was abusing her. She just did it to make him look bad, and that is very nasty work in their pending divorce, which had been filed in July. And Johnson worked with the Utah National Guard. He was in the military for 19 years. We have more details about this case and the timeline leading up to it on our website, KUTV.com. Live in Cottonwood Heights, Kristen McPeak, KUTV 2 News. The spouse is normally the number one suspect until they're ruled out otherwise, but she is definitely diabolical. She's crafty and spiteful, tried to use the courts against him. I wouldn't be surprised if she tried to withhold the location of the body in an attempt to leverage some sort of plea deal where she won't have to spend the rest of her life in prison. The conduct of parties over the past several months is representative of a highly dysfunctional marriage bringing out the the worst in the parties clearly suggested that an action for divorce should have been filed long before reaching the current state affairs. Minas wrote, Gled Hill's attorneys in the restraining order and divorce cases declined to comment Thursday. No attorney is listed for her in court records. There you have it, folks. Jennifer Gled Hill, another story said the kids are currently staying with their grandparents. And I agree with the judge. This should never have gotten this far. Truly a tragedy. Tell me what you think.